depth of field beyond aperture. So we have a problem. On most digital cameras, most point and shoot digital cameras, we have an issue. If you're doing everything right, everything right, everything is in focus. You can't really affect the depth of field even if you change the aperture. And so what is affecting this? You know, the aperture, we already know that a large hole means not much is in focus. You have a shallow depth of field. In a small hole, f22 or so, you have a large depth of field. But the other thing that really affects depth of field is the CCD size, the sensor size itself. In telephones, in most point-and-shoot digital cameras, and most digital cameras in general, the CCD size is very small. In more professional type digital cameras or film cameras, um, SLR types, the CCD size is much larger. So in the point and shoots, because of the small CCD size, the depth of field is very large. So the smaller the sensor size, the more the depth of field. So on point and shoots and telephones and things like that, you essentially have an infinite depth of field. Everything's in focus. This is good if you're just pointing the camera and shooting and not thinking about your um, settings or needing to know any of that. But if you want to blur the background, this is a problem. But there's a couple other things we can do to affect depth of field. Proximity, so the distance of the camera from the subject, affects depth of field. The closer you are, the smaller the depth of field. So if you're really close to the subject, your depth of field is going to be smaller. So macro photography, that's where you get very close, easy to affect depth of field that way. The other thing, the amount of zoom or the focal length of your lens affects it. If you're zoomed way in, you have less depth of field. If you're zoomed out or wide angle, you have a lot more depth of field. Here's the CCD size comparison. You have a small CCD here, that's you know the actual size that you'd see in many point-and-shoot digital cameras. You have a very large depth of field. Here's a large CCD. This might be in some professional video cameras or something. Tiny depth of field. So this gives you more artistic control. This small sensor is better if you're just pointing and shooting and just want everything in focus. So digital cameras, small CCD, Cheaper digital cameras have a small CCD, so this is easy. Everything's in focus. Easy to do on a point and shoot, as long as you hold the camera steady. This is more difficult. Just a very small part of this frame is in focus. Everything else is out of focus. So this is taken with a better digital camera where we had more effect on de depth of field. But you'll note also this subject is pretty close. When we said proximity, if you're closer, that affects depth of field too and makes a shallower depth of field. Again, options. Well, large depth of field is good for the snapshot photographer. Most things will be in focus. Great. If you want a shallow depth of field, it's a problem. Two ways to help lessen the depth of field. Get close. The closer, the less depth of field. So we're really close in. The camera is not far from that flower at all. It's probably just a few inches away. That makes it easy to blur the background over here. The depth of field is shallow because the focus is so close to the camera. Here the subject's farther away, depth of field is greater. Zoom. If you zoom in on a subject, this could have been proximity or zoom, but if you zoom in, it's blurry in the background. And if you're wide angle or zoomed out, more is in focus. So, zoomed in, smaller depth of field, zoomed out, wide angle, less, or greater depth of field, so very large depth of field. So another thing you can do is spacing of your subject. So here you are in your digital camera and everything's in focus from way back here to here. If you can get your background out beyond this depth of field mark, it can be blurred. So in this example too, this is more possible. Here's your depth of field, there's your flower. You want the stuff in the background blurry? Just move so that everything is outside of the depth of field. So if you just have your background very far from your subject, it's going to be easier to get it outside of your depth of field. 
So compensating for the small CCD, other than buying a new camera because you have no control of the size of the CCD and the camera you currently have, you can compensate for the smaller CCD by setting a wide or large aperture, small f number, or getting close to your subject, including macro, and zooming in. And you can also space your subject outside the range of the depth of field. So put the background outside the depth of field. All of this will allow you to make a shallow depth of field and blur more. So again, for artistic reasons, you may want to do that, and that's how you can do it.